Minot's Ledge about a mile offshore near the border between the towns of Cohasset and Situate on Boston's south shore is a 25 foot wide rock ledge that's part of the dangerous Cohasset rocks. The civil engineer IWP Lewis's 1843 report to Congress said that more than 40 vessels have been lost on the rocks between 1832 and 1841 and he wrote that a lighthouse was needed there more than anywhere else in New England. The noted architect Alexander Paris recommended a granite tower on Minot's Ledge. In 1847, Congress appropriated funds for a lighthouse on Minot's Ledge. Many people believed a granite tower similar to the wave-swept lighthouses of the British Isles to be the proper solution, as Paris had suggested, but Captain William H. Swift of the Corps of Topographical Engineers deems it impractical to build such a tower on the small, mostly submerged ledge. Swift planned an iron pile lighthouse at Minot's Ledge, a 70-foot tall, spidery structure with piles drilled into the rock on the theory that waves would pass harmlessly through the structure. The lighthouse was lighted for the first time on January 1, 1850. It was determined that Minot's Ledge Light would be a males only station with no wives or children living at the lighthouse. There were reportedly at least 50 applications for the job of principal keeper. The first principal keeper at $600 yearly was Isaac Dunham, a West Bridgewater, Massachusetts native. There were usually two keepers on duty at a time. Dunham's assistants included his son, Isaac A. Dunham. Dunham didn't believe the structure was safe. In his log during a storm in April 1850, he wrote, quote, the wind east blowing very hard with an ugly sea which makes the light real like a drunken man. I hope God will in mercy still the raging sea or we must perish. God only knows what the end will be, unquote. Dunham resigned on October 1st after 10 months as keeper. His two assistants also resigned. The second keeper was John W. Bennett, a veteran of 25 years at sea and a former first lieutenant in the English Royal Navy. A visitor in late 1850 wrote that the lighthouse swayed two feet in each direction in a storm. Bennett installed a thick rope hauser extending from the tower to a rock about 200 feet away. A basket or sling was suspended from the rope with the idea that the keepers could use it as an escape route in emergencies. During a storm in December 1850, Bennett wrote, quote, these last 48 hours have been the most terrific that I have ever witnessed for many a year. The raging violence of the sea no man can appreciate unless he is an eyewitness. If anything happens before day dawns on us again, we have no hope of escape. But I shall, if it be God's will, die in the performance of my duty." Unquote. In a storm on April 9, 1851, the station's boat was swept away. Bennett went to Boston to see about procuring a new boat and was unable to return to the lighthouse for the next few days because of a strong easterly wind and rough seas. Two young assistant keepers, Joseph Wilson and Joseph Antoine, a 25-year-old native of Portugal, were on duty. Wilson and Antoine were left without a boat. Increasing winds and rain arrived in the area late in the day on Monday, April 14th. It was believed to be the highest storm surge ever seen in Boston. Boats were used in the waterfront streets of Boston, which were buried beneath three or four feet of water. Many vessels anchored in the harbor parted their moorings. A man on shore reported that the tower at Minots had a decided list by Wednesday afternoon. Situate residents reported that the light at Minot's Ledge was last seen burning about 10 p.m. on Wednesday night. At some point, as the seas grew more turbulent, Antoine and Wilson dropped a note in a bottle into the waves below. 
The note was found the following day by a Gloucester fisherman. It read, quote, The lighthouse won't stand over tonight. She shakes two feet each way now. Unquote. The tide reached its height around midnight. At around 1 a.m., residents on shore heard the frantic clanging of the fog bell at the lighthouse, possibly being sounded as an alarm or call for help. The ringing of the bell was heard only for a few moments. It was believed that the outer supports all snapped by the early hours of Thursday morning. Evidence suggested that the two men left using the escape hauser before the lighthouse fell. Bennett went to the shore about 5 a.m. He saw fragments of the lighthouse lantern and keeper's quarters washing ashore. The body of Joseph Antoine was soon found at Nantasket Beach in Hull. The remains of Joseph Wilson were found the following October by John Bennett on a small island called Gull Rock. Both keepers are memorialized with a granite marker on the Cohasset waterfront dedicated in 2000.